Leave it. Switch that goddamn thing said, off. I said leave it, Tarek. But supposing they want to contact us. That's their problem. Contact us. It's been four hours now. Four hours is nothing. Oh, to you maybe, but I want action. Then you'll have to wait. If I was running it this... It would end in a bloodbath. Maybe, but that's the only thing they understand. A show of force. Results. They should soon know we meant business if we shot a few hostages. That's your answer to everything, isn't it? It's the only way. You're wrong. Wrong? Don't give me that bullshit. It's the only way I'm telling you. It's a man's job. They should never have sent a bloody woman. Now you listen to me. I don't take that from anyone, least of all a crude bastard like you. If you had any intelligence, you would know that this is the only way to handle it. In her, we have something to bargain with. And while there's still some chance of saving her life, they'll pull every trick to get round it. But whatever they offer, the result is the same. Suleiman Percher for her. If you were running this, you'd destroy any sympathy for our cause and we'd be branded as assassins throughout the world. But we should have done something positive. And died stupidly for nothing. Do you want to die, Tarek? I don't. We'll play it my way. Your father, the ambassador. Unfortunately, his bodyguard was too quick for us, and in snatching him away, he exposed you. In some ways, it gives us a stronger hand. I don't see how. Oh, your <coughs> father loves you very much. He lives for me and the children. Exactly. He'll be desperate to gain your release. The Israeli government might well dispense with an elderly ambassador, but they may consider very carefully the loss of one of its young countrymen. Why should they? Because they might not wish to risk world opinion if you die. You mean you would kill me? If necessary? Yes. What are you people? Animals? We'll soon show you. Keep out of it, Terry. I won't take that from a bitch like her. You'll have to. If you kill me, you won't have anything to bargain with. Putting that into your thick skull. Oh, dirty little. That's enough! You do have a point. However, there's nothing in the rules about roughing you up. And I won't put that past either of you. Especially him. It's up to you then, isn't it? It's easy to make the rules when you have the whip hand. Anyone can be brave and blessed when they are armed and no one can do anything about it. That argument is all too easy. What you don't seem to remember is that there are only three of us. Tarek, myself and Schumach on the floor below. And me with nothing. While outside, there are upwards of 200 troops. All the streets are cordoned off for three blocks to prevent our escape, and there are snipers on every roof ready to kill without hesitation. And I'd do the same if I had the chance. You would? Without hesitation. I wonder. You don't believe me? No, I don't think I do. Uh, there's no point anyway. Oh, but there is. If you could dispose of us, Bearing in mind you'd almost certainly die yourself. Would you be prepared to do it? Yes. It's easy to kill. But it takes a peculiar kind of courage to take one's own life. I could do it. I don't believe you. Try me. Very well. Seven seconds once you've drawn a pin and released the spring. I know how to use a hand grenade. 
Well, then, this is it, then, isn't it? Hey, I've got to stay quiet. Harry. Are you mad? Seven seconds. You have seven seconds to live once you've put the thing in. After all, is it? Don't fall. I'm on arm. Whoever you are, come in very slowly with your hands on your head. That's far enough. How did you get in? Your guard allowed me to enter once he had searched me. He followed me as far as the door here. What's that in your hand? Food. Put it on the table, slowly. <coughs> Keep one hand on your head. Now tip the contents onto the table, slowly. Right, stand aside. Tarek. Nothing. Get down on the floor on your hands and knees. Get up. Move! Sit over there. Are you alright? Shut up! I'll tell you when to speak. Now who are you and what the hell are you doing here? My name is Louis. And I've come to offer myself as hostage in place of Mrs. Nathan. Humanitarian grounds. My poor deluded priest, get your values right. Whose brilliant idea was this anyway? My own. I thought there was a better chance for someone like myself to act as go between. Your clock wouldn't have saved you. Schumach has a very sensitive trigger finger. He invariably shoots first and then challenges. You were very lucky. You'll never know how lucky you were. My life is a little importance. To us, but not to you. So, you risked your life to bring us food? Not you. Her. Ah, uh, ship. <clears throat> now let's have the truth. I also have a message from the Minister of Interior Security. They're going to release Persia? He didn't discuss anything with me. He asked me to tell you that in a few moments I'll be lowering a field telephone from the roof. I'm to appear at the window so there's no one to drop it. It's a trick. No, it's no trick. It's only practical means of contact between yourselves and the authorities. All right, give them the signal. Get back over to the girl. You, come here. Go to the window and pull it into the room. <coughs> Why? Because I am the obvious target of any sniper. <coughs> if they recognise you in time, they won't fire. No, let me do it. But don't risk her life. <coughs> He's got a point. I'm in charge, not you! You had better be right. Go to the window, slowly, let them see you, then call the phone in. Aren't you going to contact them? No. 
Oh, why not, for God's sake? Because they know my terms. It's up to them to contact me. Oh. If you want to play the hero, that's okay. But it's my bloody neck you're risking too. Take your hand off! Do the bloody hell with I you. said off! I mean it, Tarek. so ineffectual. Everyone's just standing around waiting. No one seems to be doing anything constructive. What can they do? I don't know. There was no sense of urgency. I thought I had to do something, so I came. And they let you? Well, they threatened to shoot me if I entered the building. But you came anyway. Yes, I, I can't explain it. I just had this tremendous compulsion. That was brave of you. <laughs> no, not really. I knew they wouldn't fire. It was just a gesture on their part. I had the fear they were glad that the last time was at least doing something positive. Thank you. Well, as things stand, there seems little point now. You won't to know that. Did you speak to my father? No, I was on the fringe of the crowd next to the barrier. But as I crossed the road, he called out to me. Yes? He said, tell her that we're doing everything we can and that the children are safe. Thank God for that. Why? We wouldn't have harmed them. We've no quarrel with children. You've no quarrel with this girl either. Look, let her go. I beg you, I will only take her place. A noble gesture, priest, but an empty one. I brought her some food. May I give her some? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> What's so funny? Do you know what you've done? You brought her a pork sandwich. And what's wrong in that? What's wrong? She's an Israeli, and you bring her pork? If you are so ignorant, there is no point in explanation. Oh no! We've nothing else to do, and it will help pass the time. And then we can have a good laugh. You ignorant man, what you do <clears throat> not understand. Try me. Leave it alone, Tarek. No! He called me ignorant. All right then, he's got to tell me. Very well. You made the mistake of mixing the Jewish religion with the state of Israel. Israel is a polyglot nation full of Palestinians, Jews, Christians, even atheists, and not bound by one religion. Does that answer your question? No, not really. In my book, Jews don't eat pork. Well, I'm Jewish and I eat it. You do? <laughs> All right then, let's see you do it. Here, take it. No. Take it! No! Why not? Because I'm not hungry. And I wouldn't touch anything after you handled it. I judge it! Still, there's no point in wasting it, is it? Not bad. Right. Quite good. You do yourselves are right, don't you? I've often wondered about you fellows. With women, I mean. Do you really go through life without a shakedown? I mean, you're a man with feelings like other men, and there must come a time when it's handed to you on a plate. I mean, some women get a kick from being laid by someone like you. So what do you do? Do you say, sorry, I'm not allowed, but you have a quick roll in the hay and then have a good pray afterwards? Well, come on, priest, which is it? I mean, you're a human being and sexy sex whatever clothing you wear. Stop him! Stop him! Why? What have I said? What have I done? I mean, I'm ignorant. He just said so. So why doesn't he tell me? It's a valid question, priest. Tell him. Very well. I am human, and I suffer temptations like any other man. Yeah, so do you give in. Stop it! For God's sake, stop it! Tell me anyway, would you? <laughs> Still, I'll give
give you choose one thing, you make bloody good wine. of the moment. If I'd hesitated, I would not have come. Usually I have little time for men, <coughs> except to use them. There's a certain inequality about you. There's nothing very special about me. Oh, yes. Take that business just now and tell it was baiting you about your sex life. Had it have been me, I would have gone for it, but you didn't. Why? Because it was meaningless as far as I'm concerned. Chiefly because of my calling, that sort of deviation is never offered to me. Even prostitutes feel they are insulting you, if they were to offer themselves. You mean it's like... like spitting on a crucifix? Yes. Yes, in a simple way, that's correct. There is, of course, a stronger argument against retaliation, and that is, you don't hit a man who's pointing a machine at you. You'd only do it once with ten. Exactly. Why ask you something? What? You seem like a sensitive person. Wrong. Oh yes, you must be, otherwise you wouldn't have spoken about your sister like that. With that being the case, what are you doing with someone like Tarek? In a job like this? Isn't it obvious? Do you like him? I detest him. But he's the best hitman in our organisation. He's devoid of any feeling and will kill without hesitation. Do you approve of that? Stop trying to make me feel guilty. This is a crusade and I'm just part of it. Always remember that somewhere along the line, someone has to pay the price. That's, that's a false argument. And Enough, you... priest. You've had your say. Tell me something. If I can. Have you ever had sex? Yes. I'm glad. Makes me feel a little better. It 
you want to go, maybe she'll take you. <laughs> Is your husband in the city? My husband died in a car crash three years ago. I live with my father now. What did you do before you were married, if anything? I was a nurse in Tel Aviv. Tell me about your children. What possible interest could that be to you? I merely asked. Yes? Yes, I can hear you. Very well, put him on. Yes, Minister, you have my terms. They're quite explicit. Release Silliman Persia and the girl will come to no harm. It's as simple as that. Well, then it's up to you to convince the Israeli government. Look, I don't have to tell you your job. There are telex, radio and telephones, and presumably you have someone in authority to make the necessary decisions. The time is now nearly six o'clock. You have 12 hours to come up with your answer. What? Very well, put him on. It's your father. Yes, Ambassador, your daughter is at the moment unharmed. Why the hell should I lie to you? Speak to yourself. Oh yes, Danny, I'm okay. Please do as they say. Please, I beg of you, get me out of here. No, no. Danny, kiss the kids for me. Tell them, tell them I love them. Tell Get them. over there! <laughs> oh, please let me speak to him some more. Are you satisfied? It's up to you now. Look, I'm not concerned how you do it. You're the ambassador. It's up to you to convince your government that we mean business. And remember, <coughs> you have 12 hours. Six o'clock tomorrow morning is the deadline. What time is it? Quarter to six. Have you slept at all? No. How long can you keep this up? As long as necessary. You didn't sleep much yourself. No, it was hard to have a socialised trained on us. It's a two-edged sword. How do you mean? Well, they want to be able to see us, but on the other hand, we can see them. It's a safeguard against surprise attack. I suppose. Seriously? No. And if you have any idea of trying to jump me, he will shoot you before you've moved a couple of feet. Right, Tarek? Right, baby. <coughs> There's something very beautiful about a city at sunrise. Earth has not reason to show more fair. Dull will leave me a soul with a pass by a sight, so touching in its majesty. This city now doth, like a garment, wear the beauty of the morning, silent, fair. Words of an English poet. That decadent stuff has no place in my world. It wasn't meant for people in your world. Meaning? It was meant for people who love beauty, as opposed to murder and destruction. You don't have a very good opinion of me. I despise you for all that you stand for. So you're not afraid of me? Oh yes, I'm afraid. And I'm sure you wouldn't hesitate to kill me if you so decided. At least we understand each other on that. What I don't understand is what turns a girl like you into a barbaric terrorist. We're not terrorists. We're freedom fighters. We're playing with words. No! This is a just cause. And in case you've forgotten it, we're legitimate. We are now officially represented at the United Nations. Only because you got the backing of the communist bloc. To me, this is a dedication. It's not a dedication. It's a 
a way of life. You revel in it. You revel in it. It is romantic. Right now, everyone is watching your every movement on their TV sets. You are the star performer. You're using the media for your own ego. And why not? Everything is justified if it stirs the conscience of the world. Every time something like this happens, we get a surge of new recruits. Yes, nine-year-old children trained by El Fatah. Most of them have never seen Palestine, and many of them never will. Nevertheless, it strengthens our country. What you don't realise is, you are using the freedom of the media to destroy the freedom of the state, which makes the media possible. You're talking in riddles. Tell me, priest, you call us terrorists? Yes. Right. Then how do you rate the generals who plotted to assassinate Hitler? By your rating, they were terrorists too. They were brave men. They were prospective murderers. No, the issue is quite different. They were trying to exterminate something evil. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Drive out the people who stole our land. Have we no rights? Everyone has rights. But you talk as if the whole country is behind you. It is. No. You are a minority group of fanatics. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians live and work peacefully side by side with the Israelis. The Israelis, through sheer guts, have turned barren waste into a prosperity your people never knew before. You can see it wherever you go in the cities, the townships, the vineyards, the orange groves. And whatever your argument, you can't deny your people have benefited by it. Only because they lack the leadership to stand up for themselves. That is what we're doing. That is our ultimate goal. If you believe that, you are sick. Very sick. Don't push me too far. What is your name? Layla. Layla. How can I convince you, Layla? These are a good people. I've worked beside them in the kaputs many a times. This is a world of construction, not destruction. Stop trying to undermine my beliefs. This is my life, my dedication. Call it a death wish if you like, because sooner or later I shall not survive one of these raids. Even if you believe that, this is not a woman's job. <laughs> you don't understand, do you? An Arab woman is nothing to her own people, just something to kick around, unless she can prove she is as good as a man, or better. <coughs> this is my chance to prove to my people that I am worthy of them. If I can secure the release of Suleiman Persia, they will never doubt my ability. You would risk your life? For a cold-blooded murderer like him. He is a patriot, a brilliant strategist, and a great leader. You call someone who murders 60 innocent people, mainly children, in an airport down with a machine gun, a great leader? You have got your values wrong. Who are you to talk of values? Let me tell you something. I went to Jerusalem last year, your holy city. Holy? You can't move the souvenir shops. Every American tourist takes home a piece of the original cross. By my reckoning, it must have weighed about 20 tons. I thought I'd take a look at the place of your leader, so I called a taxi and said, take me to Calvary. And do you know what he said? I'll take you as far as I can, but it's a one-way street. And you talk of values. Keep it. I don't know. Has my father run? <laughs> what is so funny? He did. Has my father run? 
What do you think this is? A bloody tennis club or something? If he does win, tell him I'll be home late as I'm going to a dinner dance. <laughs> do you want to keep me company this time? What is going to happen to us? That doesn't concern you. But it does. There's nothing we can do, so what? Is there any reason why we shouldn't know? I suppose not. When we hear of Persia's release, you will be released. <coughs> you should leave here. How? We've hired you up to helicopters. It will land on the roof here. It will take us to a small disused airfield well outside the city. And there we have waiting an executive jet with enough fuel to take us to Libya. And then, when we know that Persia is safely back, you will be released. And if there are a few to let him go, I hope for your sake they make the right decision. No, it'll be all right. I know it will. Come in, Ahmed. Do you read me? I'm reading you faintly. Stand by with the chopper from any time now. Out. Ahmed? I've just told him to stand by. How will he land? Place is crawling with snipers. I'll fix it when the time comes. How? <coughs> Don't question my orders. I know what I'm doing. I wonder. I wonder if someone like you know about these things anyway. Oh, I should have sent a man. For the last time, Tarek! We all fix it? How? You've no idea what we're up against. Have a look. They've got a bloody arm. Yes, I'm here. Now listen very carefully. In a few minutes, a chopper will be landing on our roof here. If anyone fires at it, on landing or taking off, we'll kill the girl without hesitation. The priest as well. You understand? Good. Make sure no one makes a mistake. Don't people like you pray at a time like this? If I were to, it would not be for myself, but for you. Oh, there is no need, Christ. No need at all. Any minute now, we'll hear of Persia's release, and then we can all have a pleasant flight. You may even toast our success in champagne. In a few days' time, you can sell your story to the press. I don't know how you've done it, but the roofs are all clear. 
and it's all okay. Good. How's your arm? Hurting, but I'll live. How many does the chopper hold? Four. And the pilot? There are five of us, including uh, Schumacher. Yes. Well, who stays behind? That's an interesting question. <laughs> well, the three of us and the girl. Which leaves the priest. You can't kill him? No? You expect me to kill one of my own men? But he came here of his own free will to try and save me. You can't murder him. You can't. I do, however, admire his guts in coming here. And in fact, there is no need to kill him. He can remain here unharmed when we leave. Would you accept that as a generous gesture from a freedom fighter, priest? Or would you prefer that I was a terrorist and shot you? Here comes Armin with the chopper now. <clears throat> What now? Get out as fast as we can. What about him? Leave him. Are you crazy? I said leave him. Like hell. Come on. Let's get the hell out of here. Seems we've both lost, priest.
They shot the girl. <coughs> she, she's dead. <coughs> they, they, they were loaded at the helicopter. Shoot, shoot them down. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Please.